YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here with another Washington Commanders video. And in today's video, I'm coming on here with my full seven round mock draft for our Washington Commanders. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure you guys go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload a video about the NFL or in this case, our Washington Commanders. We're on the road to 4,000 subscribers. We're ever so close to that goal. So hit that subscribe button again if you haven't already. Now, let's get straight into this mock draft. So you guys see already on your screen, we're at 11, and the Houston Texans are trying to trade up with us. Um, they want to come to 11, and they want us to move back to pick 13. Um, and we'll get a 2022 second, 2023, sorry about that, second round pick. And they want pick 189. So for the sake of this, I'm not even going to look at it. I'm just going to reject it just because... I'm just going to have a full mock draft without trades, just so just a regular mock draft and whatnot. And this is actually a, a one I would consider taking from L.A. too, by the way. Um, I would actually take that. But, again, I, I'm just going to go without any trades. I'm just going to do a regular mock draft. So, we're here at 11. But before we get into our pick, let's see what the teams ahead of us already decided to do. So, the Jaguars took Aiden Hutchinson at number one. And the Lions took Malik Willis at number two. Wow, wow, wow. The Lions taking Malik Willis. Um, I guess they don't believe in Jerry Goff. Um, wow, I, did, I would not expect that uh, from the Lions, to be honest. Not because I don't think they would draft a quarterback, but just because number two, that I feel like that's a little high, in my opinion. But again, if you're the Lions, how, where else are you going to get them? You might as well take a chance on that number two if you really want a quarterback. So, again... I don't know. Maybe I am tripping a little bit, but I feel like that that will be a surprise move by the Lions. But then again, maybe not. Um, then the then the Texans take Sauce Gardner at number three. The Jets take Jermaine Johnson at number four. Evan Neal goes to the Giants at number five. Charles Cross number six to the Panthers. Jamison Williams number seven to the Giants. So that could be that's a little high, uh, considering the fact that he tore his ACL and he won't be ready for the start of the season. More likely than not. So, I mean, hey, Pro Football Network. I mean, hey, th this is what they think, right? Who am I? Kayvon Thibodeau, number eight. I mean, it is talks about him dropping in the draft. But I don't know if it's going to be that far to where the Falcons are to get him at number eight. And then you have the offensive tackle, Akeem E. I don't want to mess up his name. Out of North Carolina State. And number 10, Kyle Hamilton. Now we sit at number 11 for our Washington Commanders. And we already know what the most popular pick is, right? That is Chris Olave, wide receiver um, from the Ohio State University. Now, let's look at what Pro Football Focus or Pro Football Network, sorry about that, thinks our team needs are. So, they say tight end, quarterback, offensive guard, safety, and cornerback is our team's need. Um... Obviously, we know, in my opinion at least, we took care of the biggest um, need on this team that was quarterback this offseason with trading for Carson Wentz. Now we're at a predicament where we don't have a huge need. So I think the smartest thing for Washington to do at this point in time at this draft is take the best player available, uh, take the most talented player available, which I believe they're going to take Chris Olave if he's there. But considering the fact that I believe everyone thinks we're going to take Chris Olave, a team like the Jets or Giants may take him before us. So I think, honestly, we may end up with Garrett Wilson, which I'm fine with. As long as I got one of the OSU boys, I'm fine. Again, as long as I got one of them Columbus guys, I'm good. So if you look at the best player available here, or not best player available, but if you look at the players that are still available here, you have Derek Stingley Jr., you have Trayvon Walker, Jordan Davis, Garrett Wilson, and um, Tra Trevor Penning. So, as much as I want to take Chris Olave, because I believe that is going to be the pick, I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to... Hmm. I want to go with Derek Stingley. Here's why. Um, because I think he is going to be really, really good. I really do. Uh, but I'm going to go with Garrett Wilson. I'm going to go with Garrett Wilson here. And the reason why is because, again, like I just said, 
We don't have a glaring need anymore. Quarterback was the only glaring need that we had, and we took care of that with getting Carson Wentz. Now the rest of the positions that we have, uh, we could fill with them with talent and with the best player available uh, at that current position, and the best current posi uh, player at the wide receiver position is Garrett Wilson, so why not take him at 11? Um, so give me Garrett Wilson. Now we're going to be at 47, and we're going to be looking for a linebacker, in my opinion. Um, I think if he is still there, that is the guy that I want. Um, again, as you guys don't know, I don't watch much college sports at all. Um, I'm more of a professional guy, um, when it comes to sports and whatnot. But we're at 47. Um, and I'm looking for a linebacker here. I really want a linebacker. Um, and if he's here, he's still here. Chad Mama and Christian Harris is the only two guys that, that rings a bell for me. Again, don't beat me down i don't watch college sports like that but chad mama is a guy that i came across when i was trying to do some research on these linebackers a couple months ago while the season was still going on so i'm going to take chad mama um if he's there in real life i really think he's going to be a guy that washington will be interested in drafting i think he can come in here and be a middle linebacker for us uh or they can give the nod to cole hokum who i really think they should um i don't know why they haven't given the nod to cole hokum yet uh, but now we're here in the fourth round, pick 113. Um, and I think here I'm going to go safety. I, I think I might, oh, actually, I think I may go guard. I think I may go guard here. Um, and I think I'm just going to go best player available. Why not again? None of these guys screen. Um, I know. Let's just be real. Don't know none of these guys, but I'm going to go best player available. And that's going to be Cade Mays. Uh, so I'm just addressing team needs and, and team uh, yeah, team needs and whatnot. And I think guard is considering the fact that we lost Eric Flowers this offseason. We lost Brandon Sheriff uh, this offseason, too. We replaced um, Brandon Sheriff with Andrew Norwell. But the left guard spot, who's going to be there? All right now, penciled and starter is probably Sadiq Charles. Uh, the reason why it's not going to be West Schweitzer is because his positional flex. He can place uh, both guard positions and center. So you think Charles hasn't shown he can do that, so I think he's going to be in the pencil then starter. And how comfortable are you with Sidney Charles being your starter? Me, not so much. Now we're at 189. Um, I think this is where we may go. Let's look at tight ends here. Uh, James Mitchell from Virginia Tech. I think I heard uh, on the Warpath talking about him yesterday, I believe. Could be wrong. Um, but he was, they were talking about somebody from Virginia Tech, I think. Uh, but James Mitchell... VTech, uh, uh, Garrett Prince, Derek D, uh, DC Jr., uh, Andrew Oletree. Let's look at some of these uh, safeties here. So when you look at some of these safeties, you have Bubba Bolden from my, uh, S Miami, safety from Miami or whatever. Uh, then you have Scott Nelson from Wisconsin. Then you have Tyson Anderson from Toledo. Bubba Bolden is going to be my pick here. Just because his name sounds cool, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so coming here, we have two seventh-round picks to close out the draft. 230. Uh, we're going to go, we're going to double back and take another guard. Why not? You can never have too many offensive linemen. Um, so we're going to take the best offensive guard here from North Dakota State, and that is Cordell Volsum. Both Sloan or whatever. Um, and then with our sad last pick, we're going to go tight in here. Let's go Garrett Prince. Why not? There you go. So here you have it, man. This is my draft class. Uh, this is the first of, I want to say about a couple that I plan on doing. This was just the one where I went off of solely what I would do. Um, then we're going to do the most realistic one. Um, and I'll let you guys figure out how you feel about these mock drafts in the comment section. So with that being said, it's me and boy Juan Gotti, man. Uh, appreciate you guys for watching this video. How do you feel about my picks? So at 11, I went Garrett Wilson. At, um, 47, I went Chat Mama. At 113, I went Cade Mays. Then I went Bubba Bolden at 189. For some reason, every, every, um, uh, the more times I say his name, his name sounds familiar. Um, and then with the last pick, 
we went Cordell Vos Sloan from North Dakota State. So let me know what you guys think about this video down below in the comment section. How do you feel about my mock draft? How do you feel about the players that I chose for our commanders moving forward? Remember, guys, we only have six picks, so we got to pick smart out here. As always, me and Will Wangati. Like, comment, subscribe, help to watch the commanders. Want to run to 4,000 subscribers. We're ever so close, so hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Again, I'm out. Peace.